for a little background on Boyana. She is an interdisciplinary artist um, and also a former MD and scientist, graduating from medical school in Belgrade, Serbia in 2001 and getting her MFA in sculpture from SCAD in 2013. For her artistic endeavors, Boyana has been nominated for the Joan Mitchell Grant and is the recipient of the 2014 Tan Foundation Award and the 2018 Ellsworth Kelly Award. Her work has been exhibited throughout Atlanta and the US, along with in Europe, including recently at the 2016 Venice Architectural Biennale. Here in Atlanta, Boyana is represented by the White Space Gallery. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Boyana as we learn more about this exhibition and her time and artistic practice as a WAP Fellow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. That was lovely. And thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. I very much appreciate it. Uh, Eric, if you can just tell me, is this good? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. OK. All right. <laughs> Again, very big thanks to everybody. Uh, but I would like to start with just giving thanks to Annette, who is a wonderful artist, but she's also very selfless to create this opportunity and start this organization that supports so many of us. And it means so much to many of our careers. So thank you, Annette. I want to thank everybody at Mocha GA who works very, they all work very hard and were very supportive. And also big thanks to Susan um, Bridges at Whitespace. She's a friend and a gallerist and she's the only one that can do it successfully. Um, I wish I had your energy, Susan. Thank you for being here. Uh, one more super thanks is to my husband, Brian, who is, um, one of the most wonderful people on this planet. And because of him, I had learned of technology and I can use it now in work. And so I'm very happy. Um, all right, so I really, I don't talk about myself very often. And I was wondering how to do this art talk and because there's a lot to, lot to say. And I thought of kind of Wikipedia format. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit generally about the exhibition. I want to tell you a little bit about um, where I come from and what influenced my work. And then we're going to talk about art. Um, so I was born in the 70s in a country that was uh, called Yugoslavia. Did any of you heard of Yugoslavia? Maybe? OK, good. That's great. Um, it was a wonderful place to grow up. And uh, when I talk to people, there's usually some misconceptions. So I just want to Let's see if you hold it. OK, like best? this. Is this better? Better? Is better so you don't get the breath. OK, great. Do you have I'd rather not have a microphone. <laughs> um, but many people don't know that Yugoslavia was not under Soviets. It was a very special place um, that was kind of having these amazing social policies. I always felt that I grew up with lots of freedom and lots of true uh, love and respect that was uh, uh, cherished between people. Um, at the same time, in a, in a town which we live, we had a Western goods. <laughs> so even though there was the, the, the mix, you know, the country was kind of socialist to communist, we were open to the whole world. We could travel everywhere. Um, we, I grew up, you know, listening MTV. So we kind of had the best of two worlds, I felt. Uh, I grew up in an industrial town. Uh, both of my parents worked in a big factories, mom worked in a, uh, um, there was a factory uh, working with uh, Mercedes Benz. She was a head of um, the finances department. And dad was working in a factory for uh, creating plastics. It was called epoxy. I'm saying this because this little town uh, had all these people had to come from all over Yugoslavia. To, to be educated and work there. So uh, it was a, 
kind of small community, but lots of diversity, diversity of faith, diversity of uh, ethnicity, and even we had people from, from Germany working there on international projects. What was very important to me as a child that I think influences this work uh, was the visits that we had during the weekends we would go up in the mountains and like an hour and a half ride there was this village where my uh, father was born and because the mountain was so steep people lived there uh, kind of like thousand years ago they would work the land with oxen and they had big families and very loving families. I thought that was a default, that everybody loves everybody, but now I see that that's not. And so it's very perplexing to me to have like so many uncles and aunts and everybody and we all love each other. Um, the place was, they were self-sufficient. They produced everything except salt and sugar. They even made their own brandy. Um, and uh, there was, um, often women would work with wool. So that's a material that for me, it connects me to that kind of time of nature and wildlife. Um, my aunts would often work with wool and they would tell stories, especially at night, sometimes it would happen that electricity would go off. And um, it was just a special, time in my memory and I when when I work with wool I feel connected with that time and with my ancestors um, however I like to you know use it a little bit differently today and I'm going to talk about that um, okay so generally this exhibition is planned as a landscape to be explored and um, I was thinking of us actually moving around <laughs> but maybe that would be problematic. But you know, I, I certainly, if I come here, maybe you can follow me. <laughs> no. So good. So, very good. So exhibition is organized so that you, you know, it's very natural. When we explore landscape, there's always something that we see on the ground, right? There are things that are in a, a eye level. Uh, there are things that are high up. Different colors, different movements. Um, all of this, I think, is, is very natural. There is something about contemporary art world that always give kind of rules how to explore the work or particular thing that work has to be. I really wanted to um, open this up to interpretation and I, uh, I wanted, you know, viewer to walk around. That's why it's, it's kind of placed the way it is. All right, where am I now? <laughs> Another thing that I want to talk about that was really interesting to me as a child and maybe you, because majority of you are visual artists, maybe you will kind of have uh, the similar experience, is as a child, I would, I would often close my eyes and I would see these images just coming as projection on the screen, one after another. And for me, I, I thought of them as paintings. There would be like thousands of paintings, one after another, after another. And you know, I was a little girl, and to me that was a kind of magical ready-made. My own mind was like a puzzle to me, how the mind makes this. And later, when I grew up and went to medical school, I was still wondering about that. How does that happen, right? It was not something that I saw on a television. It was not something that I uh, saw in a museum. We did not have museum where I grew up. And so, how does mind make images? Why do they come to us prepared in such a wonderful way that, that, that just flash in front of our eyes? And um, I really think that by everything that we know from science today, 
that this goes beyond mind, maybe even into genetics. And to me, it's very interesting just to think about this inner world. Because I think we live today in this world that, that looks everything from the outside, right? Even when we study mind, uh, scientists would say, oh, when you think about this, this part of your brain lightens up. And we kind of know this from the outside. But for, as a, for me as an artist, it's so important what's happening on the inside. This thought that we, nobody on the outside can see. And what's interesting is that thought appears as it was made out of light, right? We see it as a, as a picture or as a video. And of course, light is, um, is a material that I'm very interested in. And so that's the story, light and fiber. They're both ancient and actually Light is probably the oldest material that we know of, right? It was there during the Big Bang. And this whole process of light um, and its connection to life, uh, it's, it's very fascinating to me, right? And so on one side, there's light. On another side, there's wool. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about wool, like scientifically, and you all know it's a protein, it's a keratin, right? And it's the same protein that we have all over our skin. So it's a body, right? We also have it in our hair, and we share it with all the mammals and even birds, and lots of different uh, animals have this particular protein. And if you think of uh, DNA as an instrument, Protein is music, it's what's come out of it, and it tells us something, you know, about life itself. And um, so this ancient connection, you know, it's so interesting. Uh, light helps create life, and then life has all these forms, right? And then in the end creates us, and then we have light as a perception in our heads, right? Like what we see, even if we don't have artistic visions, we have dreams, everybody has dreams, except maybe some men. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, no, 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 this is really sweet, because I, I like to talk about my work with my husband, Brian, and he's just the best, he knows so much about art history. But then we learn that we think differently, right? Like I always learn, I always think in pictures and videos, whereas his mind worked more as text and syntax. And then I went online and I learned that many of us have either or combinations, different kind of combinations of this way of thinking. But just imagine, you know, it's so fascinating, light as a perception. It's not a photon, it's a perception. And that perception comes out as a work of art. Or today, through technology, we build these technological organs, let's call them like that, like monitors or projectors, that now produce light. And now that is a source of light, not just, you know, you, we always said like a natural sources of light. And um, this circle is something that is very interesting to me and something that I keep wonder of this connection of biology and technology that was always talked like in dualities that you know, biology is here, technology is there, yet it is from our mind, from brain, right? This cauliflowery looking thing, um, that it creates mathematics, it creates physics, it creates monitors, it creates cables, it creates everything. So, so it's very organic for us to be unnatural, or what we call unnatural, right, with technology. And so, anyways, this is something that I am thinking about when I make work. And, uh, and uh, that's more like, let's say, some kind of personal meanings and philosophies. But if I want to talk more as an artist, what's really always wonderful for me is a line and drawing. I think I think I have a mind of somebody who draw. And, um, 
these work, uh, works have made by thinking of a line, what line can become, uh, together, you know, being a little bit biological, a little technological. And everything started with, um, with this, this work with wool. And the way I work with wool, I take um, roving. I should have brought some roving, but it comes in this mass. I don't know, did you ever see the wool roving? It's like if you would take this and press it down almost into felt. Yeah. Traditionally, wool is like either felted, either threaded. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I started separating it. I, to me, it was almost like drawing with sp in space. So when you look at this texture, you know, it's if, if you think of maybe all of its drawing with millions of lines, right? These are like lines in space and they, they're just in the different pencils. And I really love that, how, how it shades space in such a lovely way. Um, and it started, it started for me like that. Another thing that I liked is that it's very honest. It exposes its microcosmos. It's also very scientific because that's how in science we always put something under microscope and then look at it. And um, it's almost kind of like a tissue of body that, that expose itself. One thing that I forgot, and, and I'm gonna say it now, that it's maybe interesting, this is not something that I'm imposing onto anybody, but it might be interesting how my brain works. <laughs> um, what, this connection of art and science, okay. There, there's lots of works today where uh, scientists, are, I mean, we're always very interested in art, so there's this kind of natural connection. And you can see lots of work um, that connects these two, but it always looks scientific -y. It looks like something from the lab. It's like, oh, let's take 2,000 syringes and make it into a sculpture. And it's fabulous, right? But with me, I'm not interested in that. I don't want my work to look scientific -y, right? I want it to look like art. I want it to be connected to this historical art family. That's why I went to school uh, uh, to become a sculptor. But it does have this uh, methodology of science. And what I mean by that is that science is always about the zoom, right? It's about technology, number one. And number two, it's about the zoom. What I mean by that, it's for thousands of years, we had just eye, right? And with the eye, we can see a figure. And then one day, somebody invented microscope. And suddenly, you know, we could see a cell. And you become landscape. So it's very different to see yourself like this and with the zoom, you know, in your skin. Um, and then with technologies like, I don't know, CT scans or PET scans or computer tomography, or all these different technologies tell us different story of who we are on different level. And we, we look very different as our genetic material. It's us, but it's, it's twirly little lines, right? Just like biological doodles <laughs> that unfold these living sculptures, which is us. And, and, and so, if I may be a little bit literal today, <laughs> um, you know, if you zoom in deeper into structure of this, you're going to find something more like that, a network of lines. And if you analyze that through a computer, y instead of twirly lines, you're gonna get, get this like a mathematical Drawing. It's called parametric drawing. I, I make it actually in a 3D program, and then from 3D I take it to, to 2D, and it doesn't matter, you know, it's a long story. <laughs> but, but this is what computer does with it, right? So it's a different technology, exposes some kind of different drawing. Um, if, I, if I look at the line with camera, um, so this, this might be, like, this might be a little, how do I explain it, not be too literal. 
Um, as you can see here, that's okay. There, there are all these lines uh, kind of falling out and in of each other. They basically um, set of images. These images are photographs. And how I do my photographs, um, I, I make them as almost like abstract expressionist or, or action painter, right? So action painter take a brush and makes painting, you know, where this action is very important. And if I, if I replace this brush with a camera, which is a computer, and, and photograph light with movement, it just kind of makes it an abstract image of lines. So this, this camera actually, there's this expression, kino eye, sees things which I cannot. It's the same thing that technology does in medicine or in physics. We don't see the stars up there, but the telescope do. So, so basically, through this action with camera, I create photographs, which here I, I just layered over each other. Um, now there is a, maybe, maybe you can ask questions about this <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want to make a too big of a conversation or, or get too literal but you know I was I was going from the hand and the eye into a computer into a computer again here you can see um, these these lines of wool and um, photograph that's turned into a video. Um, you can see some straight lines analyzing colors and then the same image, the same drawing that it's kind of floating on the ground is coming from here onto the viewer. So you may, it depends on the curiosity. Some people discover it, some don't. That's fine. Um, so, so to me, you know, this drawing, finding it on the surface on my skin, like that to me is magical. And then if, if we would zoom in into my skin, we would find the same protein, like it is into that fiber, right? So there's a circle, there's a pixel on the skin, and, and then expose the structure of the skin and then the same thing looked through the computer and the digital camera. Um, and so for me, these are all, you know, they look like different, but they are all, somebody asked me, are these same pieces or four different pieces? So they are different, but they are same. Just as we would, you know, look at the different aspects of who we are as humans. Um, I guess I would love to talk a little bit more about colors and then let's, let's do this as a conversation. <laughs> um, color for me, I think for all of us, color is very interesting because we see color with our eyes but we also feel color with our skin. That's why we say cold colors or warm colors, right? Color is like an installation it's not just there, kind of, it, by its nature, it's immerse, immerse, uh, immersive. <laughs> um, and so I, as an artist, as much as I like to be very thoughtful of some things, I like to be very playful when it comes to color. And so what happened while I was working on this exhibition, I got really sick. Um, and I was in pain for many, many months. And I would think of spaces into which I would want to emerge myself. I, I just wanted to choose a color. Like if I'm going to work with something and if I'm going to have it all over my studio, I wanted this color to make me calm or safe or, or just to project some kind of atmosphere that for me would feel good. And, um, and I then decided to buy a bunch of orange and, and blue uh, wool. 
But then I like to test myself that I go on Google, you know, the meaning of this color, the <laughs> meaning of that color, because there's people who study meanings of colors, and I don't like to study something like that should, that for me is so on a guttural level. I like to f keep it there. And um, I discovered that light orange like this, it's a color that um, has a very nice balance of being calming and exhilarating because there's ye red and yellow in it. So it doesn't put you to sleep, but it, it does make you kind of safe, right? And on the other side is aqua, which is, is the sky of water, so it's a calming, but again, it's, it has energy to it. So it's a good balance of colors. Um, I liked, when I was thinking you know, about the landscape, it just came to me later. You know how when, when we are in nature and usually we are on the sun and, and, and we like to discover a little area that's maybe a little bit more cool? Um, I did not think of this originally, but just I think, I think the mind, the way mind works, it, it just repeats something that we learn you know, from nature and exploring the landscape. And so I wanted to I wanted to make a space through, through which a um, viewer can walk and have these different sensation of texture and color and, and sizes. Uh, I think I'm going to finish with this video that it's very kind of very gentle and, and foggy. And if you think of drawing, and we all drew sometimes, uh, we make some very strong lines, and sometimes we make very gentle shadings. And it's very allowed, hey, it's good to see you, very much allowed you know, to do that in drawing, but um, why not with video, right? Because if, I, I just felt like if I'm going to make this video very visible, then I have to make everything else dark, and I didn't want that. And, and I don't know, then I was thinking of nature and, and the fog and when the daylight comes in and, and how everything, how one idea can push the other one. And um, I just decided to keep this the way it is, uh, almost like a backsplash or, or a light. It's just kind of, it, it needs to be noticed. And, and um, another thing that I love of video like this is that you can see the grid. Yeah. And you can't see grid usually when we watch the videos, right? Like on the screen, we never see the grid. And it's almost like this fabric, digital fabric that it's exposed. And I like again of that thought, you know, of zooming into it and taking a little pixel and making it large into this biopixel. And what does it mean? of who we are, you know, to connect this biomaterial with technology, with light, with the digital, to alter it, to cut it, where are we going, who we are, what's going to happen. And that's something that, um, that I'm thinking about and I think we can talk about. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. And I would love for you to ask, ask me or, you know, sometimes we say, Anybody has a question, and then nobody has a question. Uh, but like, if you would like to say something, if you notice something and you just want to talk about, let's talk about it. Yeah, it doesn't all have to be a question. OK, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like the ocean to me. It's moving, full of little fishes, swimming and swimming and swimming. Thank you so much. That's Wonderful. It's really yeah, good. thank you. How do you feel about ocean these days? Oh, I know. I have to protect it. I, I work on protecting it as well. I work on ocean acidification, the microplastics. I do everything. I try my best. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful work. Thank you thank so much. You. I can't believe it. It's so beautiful. Thank you so much. Because I love optics. Oh, good. I love, uh, you should see my laboratory. And you I want to see you your should, You should come to my home where I have bioluminescent algae in my okay, I'm living coming. room. <laughs> we could yeah. go together. We would love, we would all love oh. to come. Keep it in your house. It would blow your living room.
right. your money. Which is all your money as much as this is all your money. Yeah. Oh, you live here? Yeah, I live next to Georgia Tech. If you come to my home after eight, because it's a day night cycle, it blows my mind every night. I will. I have a question. And I will. Back to me. I get you. Okay, I get you? I get because you. that's the only deal. way I don't have a card. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay. Do you feel like sharing with everybody? Well, sure. Yeah. I, so, okay, we have another question. Like, so I, I have a question. So you were saying that this is sort of like a landscape walking through. And so I had a question about the structures, if it was conscious to make them architectural and, and very, you know, angular, rectangular, as yeah. opposed to organic forms. What was your thought process yeah. with that? Okay. There's, there is a couple of different answers. Do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, these three yeah. here. Like if, yeah. yeah, if you saw some of my previous work, uh, the, the shapes are always mathematical, platonic, or parametric, uh, but inside is organic. Uh, this particular shape, I like that it reflects the pixel, so it's like a giant biopixel, but there's also a very practical way, a reason why this is like this, is this this is a stackable form that I can build a, a lot at home and then come here and build it really fast. So it had to be economical. Okay. It had to be just shape, you know, because we're living in a real world. Right. So and it has to be movable. So it has to be movable, and stackable, and, and very yeah pragmatic. Yeah. And so that's that's why. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This. This is kind of similar uh, thinking of, of a mathematical shape, but it's a mathematical shape of our time and our technology. Mm -hmm. In a way, the parametric something that architectures you, architects use a lot. But I think platonic forms are always there, like in a, with a pixel. So I and, guess I read yeah. that more as organic and the way that it's sort of uh -huh. flowing, even though it's angular, yeah. it's, it's more asymmetrical, whereas yes. this is very symmetrical. Yeah. I hear you. I think so. Yeah. So I was just curious. Yeah. It was it was very practical actually. Okay. But I did love that connection of pixel pixel to the shape. Because we think of grid of something very modern and then we think of, of map as something postmodern. Whereas both of these are ancient. That's when you look how we, women were weaving, they always had a grid and they were always mapped through it. Right. So I find the shape kind of timeless. And the yeah. color is coming from the wool. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, not the light. No. It can be light, but for me it's more practical to do. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
Well, at White Space, they've got the show.